Hello and welcome to the Court Case Podcast with me, your host, Sweet Tea. And me, your host, James Court. We have got a jam-packed show for you today because it is the 20th episode of the Court Case Podcast, a milestone. We're going to be talking conspiracy theories, we're going to be talking unpopular opinions, some rants, some fun, all of that. It's happening right after this. Okay, happy Friday everybody. How are you, sweet tea? How psyched are you about the 20th episode? I feel like, someone messaged us the other day and they were Mm. like, it feels like you've done more than 20 episodes. And I was just like, it does actually. They're not wrong. Yeah, I know. It's it's gone, it's weird, like it's gone slow but gone fast at the same time. Yeah. I don't know if you get what I mean. Yeah, no, I completely agree. It has been a bit of a whirlwind, Mm. I've loved it, start to finish. One of the best things I've ever decided Same. to do. Well, look at that. I know. Uh, we have a. I we got a comment of support from a friend when I told them it was our twentieth episode. Emma okay. and her boyfriend Matt, who listened to the show, they um m- texted me and they said we'd love to give you some feedback. We've loved every single episode of the podcast best part of a friday and we want to thank you for introducing us to always sunny which is quickly turning into our favorite show oh whoops oh i dropped my monster condom that i used for my magnum dong oh my god that's amazing i love that more people are watching that show yeah i know it's so great they're listening to us they're watching our favorite show like love them amazing super fans that's what i'd like to call them absolutely yeah <laughs> we should get them on a nice um couples episode is what i think would be really cool yeah. we've got two big topics today that i think are going to completely fill the hour so i want to get straight to those and what's interesting is i've researched and done one topic and you've gone and researched and done the other topic so they're both you know we both have got like a yeah. half of the show each which i think is really nice yeah, um, I think so. That'd be cool. And I want to start with, with yours. Take it away, T. Yeah, so it's unpopular opinions. Jane says, uh, I've been sitting here doing research. I haven't. They're just <laughs> my personal uh, unpopular opinions. You know, you guys don't have to uh, agree with me. Fair That's enough. That's fine. That's the whole point in unpopular <laughs> opinions, believe it or not. Yeah, yeah, of course. Okay, so my first one yeah. I've been thinking about, which annoys the living daylight out of me mm-hmm. ever since, like, you know, working life customers are always right yeah. no they're fucking not that whole rule is bollocks <laughs> oh i hate it and i know like it's gonna make me sound like a really bad customer service worker or whatever but i'm sorry if customers are always right then what is the point in my job <laughs> what's so funny is customers are always right but 90 percent of the time they're not like no, the they're, majority they're of the time right. they're not <laughs> I've never experienced like a customer coming up to me saying something and I've gone, do you know what? You're right. Let's like, let's start doing it that way. Mm. Yeah. Like, at the end of the day, I'm working for a company. I know how it runs better than anyone that comes into the building. Mm-hmm. So who the hell are they to come in and say something else and be, and then we have to say that they're right. Like, just no, it doesn't really work like that. They should have one day a year, employee day, where you can just say whatever you want to customers and it's there's allowed. That, there's that um, restaurant in America, I believe, I don't know what it's called, where you can like deliberately be rude to your like customers, like the server can be rude to you. Uh, yeah, I've heard about that. Yeah, and I find that really funny. Like, yeah. everyone, Obviously, everyone going in knows that they're rude. They're not just rude and you're like, whoa, why are they rude? Like, you're going there for that experience. And I would, to be fair, I would love to work in a place like that. It'd be so funny. Because there's so, there is sometimes where you do just want to be so rude to these like Karens and Michaels that mm. come in. See, the problem with what that restaurant would be like, right, is people like Karens and people that you want to be rude to wouldn't go mm. to that restaurant. I know. It's I annoying. Know. You'd be being rude to nice people. I know. So that's that would be frustrating. But one but day yeah. a year, and what yeah. what they should do is it should be one day a year where you can be rude to whatever employee but they never advertise which day it is. So it could be any day of the year. Yeah. Each day of the year, it's just one day. Yeah. <laughs> and it just gets secretly memoed get to surprised. every business. Literally, you could, you could, you'll be unfortunate, wouldn't you? But like, today, let's go to the cinema, go a bit of shopping, and that happened to be the day they just encountered rude service all day. <laughs> yeah. They're like, what is going on? What has got up <laughs> everyone's asses today? And it's because it's, it's World Rude Day. <laughs> That's exactly what we want. Yeah. Oh. 
But yeah, like that annoys me. Like when my manager would always be like, oh, the customer's always right, you know, blah, blah, blah. No, I'm there to educate them and tell them that they're wrong. Otherwise, there's no point me working here if they know what they're doing. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Fuck off with that, you know? Oh. What's um, what's your next one? Next one is, oh, cancel culture needs to be cancelled. Yeah, it does. It needs its own cancel. I agree with that one too. It does. Because, right, I understand there is some people that don't need to be famous because of the type of person that they are and the type of wrongdoings that they they do. Yeah. But are you cancelling them? <laughs> you, like, interacting with their posts more, saying that, oh, you're cancelled. Well, you're actually giving them more attention. Yeah, 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 You're exactly. actually giving them more clout. You're giving and them more publicity. Them, yeah, and more publicity, exactly. So you're you're trying to get them away from that limelight you're actually pushing them more into it yeah and what annoys me about this subject is people that cancel other people if they cancel them for stuff they've done immediately like very recently um, i think there's some you know truck to some of it but when you've got people that are going through people's like tweets and social media from like five ten years ago that's when i have a really big problem i think I've thought of this for a while. I think what Twitter should do is every five years, they should delete your tweets from five years ago plus. Because what people don't understand is that people grow and change over the years. So someone that tweeted what could be maybe, I don't know, like a sexist joke or something five years ago could have been educated and not be like that at all now. And so I think what Twitter should do is every five years... They just delete all your tweets from five years ago to mm. stop that stuff. And then you can sort of, you can hold people account for more recent wrongful behaviour. and yeah, not no, I agree. For stuff they've done years and years ago. Yeah, no, 100%. And like, that is the worst part of it. It's like, because um, there was that YouTuber called Jack and he went on uh, I'm a Celeb and mm. everyone dug up loads of old tweets or something and he right. managed to because of that he got kicked off the show and that's just so so sad because like you said people grow people change like yeah. jokes back then like look at Carl Pickington Pick- Picklington Pilkington. oh my god <laughs> love Carl Pilkington <laughs> Yeah, but think about the jokes that he used to make and probably still makes. The thing is, the problem with Carl Pilkington is he doesn't intentionally make those jokes. He's naturally very naive, and that's what's fun about him. He's very innocent and naive. So the stuff that he's actually curious about ends up being very funny. But he would get cancelled nowadays. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, back in the times. Uh, What's your next one? Third one. Uh, Next one. Just a, you know, a more funny one. Drinks that have bits in, okay? So when I or- <laughs> when I order an orange juice mm. and, like, I'm ordering a soft drink, aren't I? Yeah, yeah. So why do I have bits flying around my mouth when I want it to be soft? <laughs> yeah, I get what you mean. Like, I understand there's two different types. You can have bits and you can have non-bits. But most places, they normally just sell one or the other. And, like, especially, like, most cafes, I find they... They just sell ones with bits in. Mm, Trying to be like, look at this, this is healthy. Tell you what, I think the same goes for really small, crunchy ice in your soft drinks. That annoys me as well. Yes, 100%. Yeah, because that's not soft, bitch. No, that's not soft. And it does ruin the whole experience. It's just not what I ordered. (laughs) No, I completely get you. When I have, I'm not saying I don't like orange juice with bits in like it's fine, but just there's sometimes that you just don't want bits in your drink. It's tolerable. You know, you just, like, you tolerate also it. Also with smoothies as well. That's literally in the word smooth. So mm. sometimes when I'm ordering a smoothie that's like made from a cafe, they haven't moving it down. They haven't wixed, wixed it up enough. There's yeah. still bits in it. And I'm just choking on these fucking bananas <laughs> in my smoothie. I'll tell you what. I'm glad that your third unpopular opinion is about drinks because my unpopular opinion is about drinks. Oh, wow. We're, uh, that was a good little transition Thank we didn't you. even plan. <laughs> and I'm ready to go on a rant. You don't oh, know You don't know what say. this unpopular opinion is, right? No, I don't. Are you ready? No. <laughs> okay, well, here we go. My unpopular opinion is I hate coffee culture. I hate coffee culture for multiple reasons, okay? And I'm going to explain them now. Firstly, the names of different coffees. When I go out and have an alcoholic beverage, right... You know what my regular drink is. What's my na- regular drink? 
Long Island. Oh, rum not and co- cocktail. Rum and Coke, yeah. Rum and Coke, right? So you've got different alcohols. You've got beer, wine, rum and Coke, gin and tonic. All very different names. All yeah. sound very different. Easily to tell apart so you know what you want. Normal soft drinks. Coke, Pepsi, Fanta. Very different names. Okay. Orange juices, the same. When you're going to have a coffee... Mochaccino, Frappuccino, Makidooki, Wikichino. I don't know what the name is, a Chino. Why can't they? What I don't understand, okay? <gasps> They're all different, though, James. They, they are. all have different qualities. So make the names very distinct. For example, <laughs> the other day, you went out and you had, what was it, like a mocha or something? Yeah, I tried a mocha for the first right. time. A mocha, <laughs> a, a mocha is... <laughs> a mocha, right? <laughs> Um, so a mocha is coffee and chocolate right it is yes yeah it's a chocolate coffee okay so why didn't they call it a chocolate coffee when i go to a bar i ask for a rum and coke i don't ask for a rum a cocodino do i (laughs) why didn't why can't you just go to the coffee and go can i have a chocolate and coffee please (laughs) it doesn't make sense to me This shouldn't be so fucking funny. (laughs) Right? Why is this the only beverage culture where the names sound so stupid? (laughs) I don't know. To be fair, like that is a good point. And there's more, Um, right? Well, I was just going to say, you know that the where we work, they brought in a new coffee machine. Yeah. And I remember I was talking to the manager and I was just like, what's the major difference between like a latte and a cappuccino? Because in my eyes, they are basically the same, but just different order. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's it's just mental to me that like, they're literally the same different order. And like, you would know it off by heart. Like I could not tell you right now what a latte is, what a cappuccino is. I only literally know espresso, black coffee, Americano and mocha. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. But that's because we're not coffee drinkers. I know. But it's still, it's. But there's more, right? I got more. It's not just about the oh. names. So, if you basically, if you're one of those people who can't function without their coffee, you are nothing yeah. more than a drug addict, right? I'm gonna say some things to you. Jesus Christ! No, no. L- right, hear me out here. I'm gonna say some things to you. No, there. No, no, no. You're not going any further with that. Do not call them a drug addict. You can call them a, like a caffeine addicts but they're not a fucking drug no, addict right let me prove my point <laughs> oh my and then God. You can, you're allowed to disagree obviously this is unpopular opinions <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right so i'm gonna l- listen some quotes to you okay i can't function unless i've had a line of coke right you wouldn't like me unless i'm high right those are actually sentences people have said about coffee Okay, I've heard people no, say to me... someone said a line of Coke about right, coffee. Right, but no, replace line of Coke with coffee oh. is, is what I'm saying. I've had people come up to me and be like, ah, oh, I can't <laughs> function without my morning coffee or you wouldn't like me without my coffee and stuff. And it's like, so you're intentionally acting like a dick to me because you haven't had a drink. <laughs> like, what is that about? Right, wait, yeah, okay. If we're talking about it in the respect of don't get on the wrong side of me, I haven't had a coffee yet. Yeah. That's, that is, yes, I agree. <laughs> that is a little bit like, okay. <laughs> give give them your fluid and you're good to go. Yeah. But I get that. I just think, I just think that's so strange. <laughs> no, yeah, no, you are right. But I mean, yes, to be but... to be honest, but it's the same with, it, it, I didn't mean for it to sound like harsh, but it's the same with alcohol because alcohol is a drug and caffeine is a drug. So, yeah. I sub- I mean, technically, I guess it is if you're addicted to caffeine, but I mean, you can get addicted to energy drinks which have caffeine in it yeah. as well. So Yeah, exactly. But like, at, what, at the end of the day, like, I'm fine with people being obsessed with coffee and I'm fine with people whatever. Yeah. As, as long, like you said, as long as they don't do the whole thing of like, oh... Don't talk to me until I've had my morning coffee. Yeah, because <laughs> what do we call people that can't function unless they've had alcohol? Alcoholics. Yeah, like, yeah okay, <laughs> so... fair. Okay, fair. <laughs> you know? <laughs> it just reminds me of like, you know who from work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know who you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, it's just funny. I mean, to be it fair, is. I feel like most adults <clears throat> love coffee and feel like mm. they have to make it a personality trait. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like, oh, 
I've had my coffee. Oh. I can now lift a box. Yeah. To the office. Oh <laughs> God. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not into coffee, but maybe one no. day I will, and I'll wake up every morning and be like, James, don't talk to me until I've had my coffee. Yeah, I, th- I think I'm. <laughs> I think I'll be at some point in life I like coffee because I used to not like any hot drinks, and now yeah. I'm I'm having buttloads of hot chocolate. So uh, hot I'm, chocolate is fucking literally hot. Yeah, hot chocolate. Like, why would you not like that? It's a level. <laughs> it's a level up for me. You know. Now I'm having you, hot I mean, chocolate. You don't see coffee. why you don't like tea as well. Like tea's just unreal. I don't know. It's just never. I'm. You know. I'm supposed to like tea because I'm British. So I mean, just a bit stereotypical that. It is stereotypical. You don't have to. No, but most people. And you don't. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Good point. <laughs> I'm British and I don't drink tea. Bloody uh, hell! Watch deal out. Deal with it. <laughs> so, are there any other unpopular opinions you thought of? I mean, I've got, I've got like lo- loads more, but it just depends how much bloody time we've well, got. Well, we've got about like four or so minutes before we need to move on to the next topic. So why don't you reel off another couple quick ones? Okay. So this is the thing. Not even just swear words, but words in general, right? Mm. Who actually decides <laughs> that they're offen- offensive? Yeah, I don't, I, I don't. I've watched a documentary on Netflix, History of Swear mm. Words, and it is, it is very interesting where, they, where these sort of yeah. words come from. But, like, and I like, don't know. I know there's, like, some cultures that, you know, find certain words offensive and, like, certain religions that wouldn't say certain words. And that's, like, fair enough. Like, I completely respect that people live by their own rules and stuff. But if you think about it, like, realistically, mm. words are literally just a, a combination of letters. Like... Mm-hmm. My name is a combination of letters, and so is the swear. So is swear words. So like they're literally like the same, the, but just people get offended when you say certain words. Do you the, know what I mean? And like it also another thing. Like when I was in school, yeah. loads of new words were coming into play, like peng, bait, shit like that. But like, I know that was always in play, but like they the meanings always change throughout yeah. the years. Yeah, yeah. Like and like Peep. different words here have different meanings in like Australia, America. Mm. Like it's like who actually decides the meaning and what they mean. Yeah. And what's the catch twenty two with swear words is the fact that you shouldn't say them is what makes them offensive. Like yeah. if you didn't yeah, exactly. want them to be offensive again, just have everyone say fuck all the time. Yeah. And it, you know? That's and like yeah. I, I, that's the thing, like we're in society, like you wouldn't walk around and saying fuck every five seconds. Like I know. I wish because because it's it's not it's frowned upon yes but that's that's what i'm getting at why is it frowned upon because at the end of the day it's just another word in the dictionary yeah just <laughs> and say i'm not it. saying this because i want to swear more i swear fine i swear a fine amount already <laughs> like i'm just saying like not even just with swear words like with any word yeah ever because when you think about celebrities like they call their kids like apple mm. atlas story <laughs> <What's so laughs> like, stupid names. Uh, like they've literally just taken words from the dictionary and just given their names to a kid but everyone's yeah. like oh my god what a weird name well why is that a weird name because it's a word that you say every day mm. if they want to call their kid it they want to call their kid it like do you know what i mean yeah swear more guys you know just <laughs> to, you know just do it just do it all right have a nice little yeah. sweary time with your family. That's with not family. what I'm promoting here. <laughs> I'm just saying words in general, then their meanings is very, very weird to me. It's like, who does decide that? Yeah, well, you should watch the history of swear words. It's really interesting. Yeah, I do need to watch that. If you're interested about that. And my soundboard has just gone. I liked that on popular opinion, but we've got, we've been requested to cover conspiracy theories on the show a lot before a lot uh, yeah a lot of times a lot and um we are going to get to one we're gonna we chose to start off with this new segment of the show we chose one of the most famous conspiracy theories and we says most famous but i didn't know about it until now it i find it mad that you didn't know about it mm. but um we are going to be deciding the court case court is going to be deciding whether the moon landings were faked or real right here on the show and that is happening just after this okay here we go sweet tea so conspiracy theory time the conspiracy theory we're tackling today were the moon landings faked first off we asked our audience on instagram and you've got the statistics haven't you i do cool why don't you tell us what they said yeah i might do (laughs) no um so um two no sorry (laughs) eight percent 
said they definitely do think it's fake. Yeah. Leaving, you know, 92%, if you can do the maths, meaning thinking that it did happen. Okay. Fair enough. Um, so that's so that's two people that do think that do think it's fake. That's 24 people that think it happened. So it's okay. quite a, a fair amount of replies. Yes. There. And from my research today, in Britain in general, one in six people believe that the moon landings were faked. Wow. So, okay. Yeah. And I've done three hours of research today into this hell. so we can thoroughly have a f- full on answer on whether it is or not and if the answer at the end is because um is that they weren't fake it's not because we're scared of the government knocking on our door FBI, open up! it's because that's the truth and we're going to get to what the truth <laughs> is or not all right <laughs> i found that sound this morning <laughs> But first, what I wanted to get to first is, one, I find the topic of space really fucking interesting. I find it so interesting how we get into space, what the plans are for the future, everything. And so I... No, I agree. So if anyone wants to know, I'm going to go through a lot of info today, but I very much oversimplified it so that it can be more casual for casual listeners. They don't have to Mm -hmm. really concentrate. So I'm going to... To give some context... There's a reason why the conspiracy theory of the moon landings were fake. There's a reason why it came about. So I'm going to go through the history of how man got to the moon so we can best know the reason why people think yeah. that they could be faked. And suddenly everyone clicks off. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think it's going to be quite entertaining. I've oversimplified it. I've not used any like big words. It's just going to be a fun story about how we yeah. go to space. I think, go for it, go for it. Yeah, and um, if anyone wants to know, I, a lot of my research I watched, there was a show called History 101 on Netflix and they've got an episode on the space race. So I watched that and then I read a bunch of cr- articles on Google for a couple hours about conspiracy theories. So basically, do you know anything sweet tea about the story of how man got onto the moon in a rocket yes they did go in a rocket fair (laughs) enough basically it was a huge thing in the 60s through to the 70s it was a time and it was it was called the space race basically it was a race to get the first person on the moon into space and so far in throughout history 563 people have visited space really yeah 501 are women 62 no 501 are men 62 are women oh my god yeah and we've what i found really interesting 30 lives have been lost from space and all of them have pe- have all the lives have been lost from training no one's died up in space it's always been during the training to get up there holy shit that they've really? died. yeah yeah that's wild and in one year the world spends 62 billion dollars on space and space research and space travel damn yeah that's mad so basically the space race picture yourself it's post world war 2 world war 2's just finished and those two nukes were dropped on japan you've heard about that right yeah we dropped two nukes on japan now those were and still are the most powerful weapons that man has ever made were those nukes mm-hmm. absolutely devastating was awful and after basically after world war Two finished two huge superpowers in the world came it was america and russia america was capitalist which is like what we are now and russia was communist which is a whole different thing which we won't get into it's a different system of government it doesn't work so that's yeah. what you got to basically no for that anyway and basically what happened was something called the cold war which was basically russia versus the usa after okay. world war Two. what happened was america used these nukes on japan and then russia was like we need nukes as well because they're really powerful and then we can fight anyone off and america was like we need more nukes so if anyone fights us we can all nuke each other okay of course, yeah now what happened was the nukes or the missiles as they had them could only travel about 150 miles to from where they were being launched and of course um usa and russia are about 1500 miles from each other so if they started a war their nukes wouldn't reach each other yeah so okay basically what they both decided was we need to get these missiles into space so we can move them through space and then drop back down and hit the country that we want to hit bloody hell yeah and so 
Um, that's like effort. <laughs> yeah, I know. So both of these countries were like, that's the key to beating each other if it ever comes to a war that bad, right? So that both countries started researching how they can get their missiles into space. And then once they realized, uh, once they were figuring that out, they were thinking, what if we could have missiles that could spy on the enemy, that we could send them up into space, leave them in space, and we could look at what the other country's doing. And so that's where the idea of space satellites come from. So, the, so which obviously we have now, which are these satellites in space that are monitoring yeah. space and things. So... Right. Basically, what we're going to do this with this space race history now, we're going to do it like a game. There's going to be a scoreboard. We're going to have the Russia on one side. We're going to have the US on the other. And mm -hmm. each, what ha basically happened was they were each trying to beat each other which you, with a different milestone for getting into space. So now that they both decided we're going to try and get a satellite into space, it was a race for who can get there first. And basically, on October the 4th, 1957, the Russians launched a satellite into space. They okay. were the first ones. So, at the moment, it's Russia 1, USA 0. Mm -hmm. You up to speed with me now? Yeah, I've got the maths. Cool. So, after that, NASA was made in America, which we all know who NASA is. They're yeah. the big space company. And they were like... We, they may have put a satellite in space, but we're going to put a human in space. We're going to send a human up there. He's going to chill in space for a bit. He's going to come back down. That's what they decided yeah, they yeah, were going to yeah. do. So, but there's multiple challenges to that. One, if you put a man in space, it's minus 454 degrees in space. So they, they would more than freeze to death. And also, there's no pressure to keep your blood as a liquid. So your blood would literally boil and you would explode you're in space holy shit yes and also if you put someone into space and when they come back down the speed that the craft is coming back down will create temperatures of 5,000 degrees which is half as hot as the sun that so, is mental so i didn't know any of that these are all things that they had to contend with and had to overcome to be able to just put a man in space yeah that's mad that they overcame all that yeah so what they did next was they... Oh, did they? <laughs> oh, did they? Yeah, here we go. So what happened next was they launched animals into space. Okay, so both oh. the Russians and the US, they launched chimps and they launched dogs. And what happened was all of them survived getting into the space atmosphere, but they didn't survive the return trip. They couldn't afford to bring them back down. So they just died out in space. Oh, my gosh. Which is very sad. That so, is. But... Um, but because they survived the launch into the atmosphere, they're like, well, we can take a human now. So, on in 1959, NASA selects seven pilots that, the, that they called the Mercury 7 they were going to try and send into space, and the Soviets selected their own team, the Soviets being the Russians. Okay. But on April the 12th, 1967, a Russian named Yuri Gagarin was the first man in space, and he went up there for 108 minutes which means the scoreboard now is the Russians 2, NASA 0. Oh. So the USA are still losing. Yeah. So the, uh, just three weeks later, they la NASA launches a man into space, but his trip was a lot shorter, but they still got him there. So it was a good morale okay. boost for America. They're like, yeah, yeah we still I did it. Imagine. But we've got to beat the bloody communist Russians. Tensions are rising between Russia and America, and also there's a crap ton of stuff happening on the ground in Earth. At the same time, you know the Berlin Wall? Yeah. At the same time, Russia elected a wall through Germany and through all of Eastern Europe to um, separate Eastern Europe from the West which was a huge okay. amount of te uh, of tension in the countries. So that was creating a lot of crap. And, you know, so not only are they trying to get into space, the world's in a bit of a crap place as well. Mm -hmm. So John F. Kennedy, who was the president of um, the US at the time, he went on, um, I've got a sound clip here. He went on TV and he made this statement to the people of America. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the earth. So he goes on TV, he's like, we're going to do this by the end of the year, which yeah. is a bold statement. They got a year to put a man on the moon and bring him back. And, you know, they're already behind the Russians 2-0. That's mad. So they create this thing called Project 
Apollo and John F. Kennedy, the president, he is fully behind NASA. He's putting so much money into it. And on November the 16th, he visits, visits NASA, Cape Canaveral, um, to help build morale and get everyone ready. But then six days later, he is assassinated and he dies. Oh, which I, I don't know if you've heard about John F. Kennedy being assassinated, but yeah, that is also right. a conspiracy theory, but that's something for another time. <laughs> so six days later, Kennedy's assassinated. NASA's lost their best, you know, their greatest fan, their cheerleader. So yeah. morale's bad for them. And then in 1964, the Vietnam War starts and about 100,000 Americans are shipped off to Vietnam. Um, to go fight a war and also after then the soviets just start racking up a bunch of firsts in the space race they get the first object to touch down on the moon they get the oh my first God. what was it um i don't know what it was it was just like a probe uh. or something they get the first woman in space and they also get the first spacewalk they get the first guy out floating around in space so they rack Damn. up a five nil lead to, between russia and the usa Bloody hell. So we're getting close now, and it's gotten to the point where landing a man on the moon is USA's only hope because government that are basic and the American people are like, if you don't land someone on the moon, we're going to stop your space funding because the Russians are just winning, right? <laughs> so in they then make a huge rocket called the Saturn V, and this is a big thing. It's 363 feet. It's taller than the um, Statue of Liberty, and it has yeah. the power of more than 43 jumbo jet planes right huge bloody rocket and so and there are also rumors that the soviets have their own own rocket so nasa's in a panic they want to get everyone out so in 1968 you've got assassinations and riots happening in america everything's in turmoil you've got thousands of men coming back from vietnam in body bags they're losing the vietnam war and the soviets they've also got crap as well they've got the first man they sent into space he's just he died in a plane crash their morale is really low so everyone wants one of them wants a man on the moon they want someone to get there so and both of them both of these countries desperately want that victory in august of 1968 nasa announces that they will take their first shot at the moon by the end of the year okay not to land though they want to get someone to orbit the moon in the rocket and then fly back Okay. They end up doing that on my birthday in 1968. Ah. They send three men. It takes them three days to get there. And then they go around the moon and then they come back. So they're like, yes, we can do this. We've got this. All right. So mm-hmm. it's it's now 5-1 to the Russians and the USA. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So that's a success. And then seven months later, right? Seven months later, everyone turns on their TVs and they hear this. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. And the USA has done it. In, in 1969, may, they put a man on the mood, and I've written, fuck the scoreboard, America won. Remember, no Russia. <laughs> That's what I've written. And basically, that was watched by 500 million people when that was first broadcast. Um, and in the three years afterwards, they put another 10 Americans on the moon and the Russians completely abandoned any projects to put their own people on the moon once Americans won. Yeah, fair enough. So now that you know the struggle it was to get to the moon, how bad Russia was behind, uh, Russia was ahead and America was yeah. behind. The conspiracy is that they faked the moon landings because they were so behind that they just faked it so they could ensure that they got a win. Do you get me? Yeah, I get you. So basically, that's where the conspiracy theory comes from. They didn't have a hope of getting to the moon anyway. They were losing 5 0. So they just faked it. They shot it on a sound stage. It's all a movie. You know, that's why the Russians should have done it. And they've kept up the lie all this time until now. Yeah. Even though they've just, you've just told me that other people have landed on the moon since. Yeah, well, they're saying that the following 10 people that America put on the moon, those were also faked. Oh, okay. Yeah, but you've just told me that there's like 150, 500 people that have landed on the moon or something. No, no, no. That that statistic is how many people have been in space, not landed on the moon. Oh, sorry. Right, yeah. Okay. So I've got a list, basically, of evidence for and evidence against the moon landings happened. But first, the votes have changed a bit on our Instagram poll about who who thinks they're fake and who doesn't. Could you tell me the updated results? Not massively, but we've gone from like 7% of people thinking... 
um, that it's fake to now 10% of people. So we've had like an extra couple of votes thinking that, yes, it's fake. Okay. So um, Yeah. So like three more percent, basically. Okay. So I just thought that was kind of interesting. Yeah. It's getting closer to the one in six in England statistic. Yeah. That we've got. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to talk first. We'll talk about what evidence people have that the moon landings are fake first firstly um we're gonna i'm gonna tell you guys some of the claim and obviously you as well teeks you don't know some of the claims people have made more recent celebrities joe rogan and shane dawson don't believe the moon landings happened they would think they were faked well who gives a fuck what shane dawson thinks yeah i mean he screws cats so i don't think his opinion apparently is very valid. <laughs> <laughs> One of the first claims that was made was this US Navy officer called Bill Kazing who said that there's a 0.0017 chance of su- of a successful landing on the moon. That's wild. That's so tiny. That's very tiny, but also he is a US Navy officer. So what does he know about space? He's on the sea. Yeah. You know. Where's he gotten this number point. from? But um, out of thin air. <laughs> yeah. Literally. <laughs> Another claim <laughs> is from the Flat Earth Society, because of course, um, in 1980, they said that the whole thing was staged by Hollywood, sponsored by Walt Disney and directed by Stanley Kubrick. They're quite particular with uh, the people and the company they've chosen there. It's quite interesting. Yeah, but I mean, where have they pulled this idea from? Again, out of thin air. Yeah, but (laughs) the thing is, I've got, now we're going to get onto the evidence that they bring to the table. Yes, this is what I want to know. Okay, so their first bit of evidence is that the sh- basically that when you look at the photos of the men on the moon, the shadows don't match up. The shadows, of, so one shadow of a man will be going this direction and a shadow of like the spacecraft will be looking going in a slightly different direction so they're Never saying noticed. yeah so they're basically saying if the moon was only lit by the sun the light should only be coming in one direction so the shadows should be going the same way so it's obviously multiple lights from a film studio making the illusion of the shadows looking in different places oh my god okay Is that's it... uh that's like precise isn't it yeah i will get to debunking these theories the second evidence against is that in all of the pictures of the man on the moon and the man walking and stuff when you look at the sky there's no stars in the sky Uh, it's just black so they're saying they didn't have the technology to um, fake a scene with stars so they just decided on a blank black set but like i swear sometimes you can look up and there won't you won't see any stars in the sky so like that could just be that night yeah i have got i have got a rebuttal to that as well there's basically there's like (laughs) four or five main points and i want to read them out and then i'm going to get to yeah 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 thoughts on those the next one is the the you so you know they put they stepped on the moon they put the flag down the american flag yeah they basically said the flag is waving in the video but there's no wind on the moon so how is the flag waving, right? Oh my god, wait, I haven't even thought about any of this. That's mad. Yeah, so that's that's another one. And then the last one is just the simple one is if if, you know, we've been able to land on the moon, why haven't we gone gone back since 1972? Why haven't we gone back? But people you know? have, haven't they? Um not since 1972, no, not set foot on the moon. People have gone into space, flown in the orbit. So what he satellites. Says- so how many people have been on the moon then? About 13. And the last one was 1972? 1972, yeah. Yeah, okay, good point. Why hasn't there been any more? I mean, especially if at the moment they're doing all this, like, they've now moved on to Mars, haven't they? Well, they're planning Mars. They've got the huge... Well, they are planning on going back to the moon. They've got this huge... It is... Ah, oh, I find it so fascinating. It's incredible, right? It's going to get to a point in a couple of years where there is never not people on the moon because what they're planning on having this satellite that's sort of like a sort of like kind of like a petrol station sort of in the in the sky and they'll have a group of astronauts that will park up on this satellite then that satellite will have a rocket which will land on the moon and they'll set up a little moon base and then there'll be people coming from the moon to the satellite to the satellite to earth constantly and so there'll be a rotation of people and there will always be someone on the moon at some point what the fuck 
yeah, it, it's going to be proper sci-fi stuff. And then they are hoping that once they get all that working and constantly and they can figure out the fuel and how to do that effortlessly, it will help them to get to Mars. Because in a rocket, it takes three days to get to the moon. If you mm-hmm. take would take a rocket to Mars, it would take eight months. Jesus. Yeah. So that's what they've got to overcome this time, is how they can have a rocket that stores enough fuel and enough resources to last an eight-month trip to get to Mars. You need enough food and and water and everything for Mm. eight months. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. I didn't know any of that. If you go on NASA's website, they basically, I think the middle of last year, they did this sort of mission statement video where they had this cool presentation explaining all of their plans to do with space some of the stuff they're planning to do it's incredible it's incredible honestly how dare i say at the start of this segment oh yeah i like space i think space <laughs> is awesome and know nothing about <laughs> any of these things because <laughs> um something my brother told me the other day which i think is mad is something like since 2011 2011 was the last time that humans the only place humans were was on earth Since 2011, there has always, constantly, been at least one man in space. Really? Yeah. So, before, um, so 2011 or something was the last time that humans were only on Earth. Wow. That's mad, isn't it? Anyway, so I'm going to debunk those four things for you right here. So, anyone that's got any doubts about the moon landings, you know, can shut up. So, here we go. You ready? So, the first one was the shadows in the photo aren't parallel you know what i was saying so they're saying there's more than one light source so they were in a film studio it's because of the photography basically when you're moving a picture so the world around us is 3d but pictures are 2d and when you're moving something from 3d to 2d the perception can change and things can look different and they're basically saying if you go outside when the sun is low even on the earth and you look down there are shadows going in different directions because it's just it's just the trickery of light and just light changing and if you look at photos people have taken on earth then the light changes yeah the shadow isn't always in front or behind like sometimes i've seen it to the side yeah it's 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 literally as simple as that yeah that one so fair enough that one that does make yeah that makes sense like the second the second one was that why in the, none of the photos is there no stars in the sky that one is it simple so you know when we're walking about during the day on earth and the sky is blue and there's yeah. no stars on the moon during the day the sky is black well that's literally what i said like you know yeah. it could just be that the stars weren't visible at that point daytime on the moon it's a black sky so he what so he landed at daytime then? yeah Right, yeah. okay, fair enough. And then what was the next one? The, the fl- wind. Oh, the flag this is This is what I'm interested about. Flag is waving, but there's no wind. This one is is great because it just goes to show you how much NASA thought of the whole trip, the little details they thought of. Yeah. They knew ahead of time that there's no wind on the, mo- on the moon, but they knew that they wanted to put a flag down on the moon and they wanted everyone to see the American flag. So what they did was they just made a flagpole that was an L shape. And they just had a piece of metal along the top and put the flag like that so that the flag would go out straight and it wouldn't troop down. That's it. Oh. So they just made an L-shaped flagpole and put the yeah, flag... Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. So, so it wasn't waving in the wind then? No, it was, it was just... just out straight. Yeah. And people were like, well, that's waving. So what, have they like proven that? Have they like taken a picture of the pole? Yeah, you can. if you look at the... Because there's obviously people have recolorized and we high depth pictures from mm. the um 1969 when we land when they landed on the moon and you can see you can see a metal pole along the top you can s- so makes sense right and it's like it's such a shame because they put so much effort into all of this and now literally you just got <laughs> these conspiracists that are just picking apart at every single detail yeah and but like it's great because they're literally coming back like well because of this because of this because <laughs> of this and it's like you have nothing to stand on anymore <laughs> yeah exactly and the fight the final evidence that they've put against is well why haven't we been back right yeah and the simple one is that was that so the last mission was in 1972 
and mm -hmm. basically political priorities changed. They won the race. Um, there was no need to go back to the moon. Like apart from all that's on the moon is a few rocks and things like that. There's not much else you can do. And they basically changed their priorities to making these space stations where there's always a human on the moon. Uh, oh, not always yeah, in, that's fair human enough. on space, human in the moon. So they don't, you didn't need to go there. It's kind of like they've proved their point and they don't need to keep on proving it. Yeah, absolutely. And if you think that the world spends $62 billion a year on space travel, that's yeah. a lot of money to waste on a Just trip on that you don't done. need to make. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. That's a good so, point, to be fair. What, I've thought of it like that. One statistic, which I mean, whether we should be doing space travel or not is uh, a, to a to question for another day. But if you wanted to solve the world hunger crisis, it would cost $36 billion. Yeah, year. I know. And space Messed travel up, is 62. It? Yeah, it's mad. But that, yeah, that's a, see, that's a lot of money to waste. Well, on. I mean, it's not even like there's so many things like people's network is enough to solve um, poverty and stuff like that and they and they don't so there is a regard so that's debunking the um theories that these conspiracy people come up with but i've also got some evidence just general evidence that we did actually go first one is that th basically third party evidence exists so there's evidence that say N nasa the company has their own evidence it's like oh we went to the moon but people could all be like well you're the company that did it you doctored the images blah 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 right but there's companies that aren't nasa that aren't tied to them at all that have like their own satellites and images and been like have no we've got evidence that they went like that's good i like that you know and um and basically satellites since the two year 2000 have gone over the moon have taken pictures and you can see the flag still there you can if you zoom in far enough you can see their footprints like wow you can see it yeah um also in 2012 they released an image that they'd taken and you can see the flag still standing so like obviously we went yeah and, um, yeah and basically also since all of the trips to the moon they've brought back 382 kilograms of moon rock right mm -hmm. and the thing that makes me think from this one that makes me think we definitely went is the space race which i explained earlier was a race between the usa and russia and obviously the americans won against russia so you would think russia would be a bit sore about the fact that yeah, they lost yeah. so when the americans brought their moon rocks to chinese japanese and russian scientists to do tests on why would the Russians then go, yes, these are definitely from the moon, absolutely. If they were a bit sore, you know, you think they would be No, like, I get what you mean. Yeah. Um, so Russian scientists said these moon rocks that they got from American people are actually from the moon. But, I mean, obviously it's ethical to not lie as well. I suppose so, yeah, but... Like, I guess they were literally just doing it, not because they're not, like, bitter or anything, it's just because they have to, like, it's their job. Yeah, I, I, obviously I get that. How, but... do they, how can they tell if it was from the moon like i, I don't know Basically, i'm not a scientist I didn't, there's obviously a system i didn't write this down in my notes but the documentary that i wrote uh no one of the articles that i read did touch on this and it's something to do with there's like a type of glass or crystal in moon rocks that if it mm. was in the earth atmosphere it w w would have whittled away over a certain amount of time but in the moon's wow. atmosphere it doesn't so, so I'm guessing that moon rock has riddled away now then. Um, yeah, I think it's the amount of time riddled away. Or if you preserve it in a certain yeah, yeah, place, yeah. maybe in a vacuum or something, they can keep it. I don't know. Interesting. But, Very um, interesting. So yeah, I believe it happened. Because also, like, it's fun to believe that it happened. Yeah. Like, why are you... Like, I learned about it in school. Why would you ruin... <laughs> like, kids... I remember everyone was so excited learning about Neil mm. Armstrong. And like, you know, imagine then you grow up and you hear that oh it's not true and the thing is like if it wasn't true the amount of people that have like kept this covered up yeah all for just beating a country it just seems a little bit pathetic Four, like, four hundred thousand people were employed at nasa at the time that man stepped foot on the moon so you would have had to keep silent four hundred thousand people and you mental. think you would think in the amount of time one of them would have might have let slip something yeah exactly so it's r ridiculous but i think i think both of us our court case verdict finality is that the moon landings did happen and this conspiracy theory is bogus <laughs> right yeah. 
Does, is that our decision? So. I think, yeah, I agree. Wee, we did our first one. And we agreed on it. That and is we agreed mental. as well. That's fantastic. And But I would like to know what everyone else thinks. If you th- if if people think that I've missed out some points. I was quite thorough with my research, but I am just one man. You so, are. Maybe um, I'll have to research the next one. Yeah. Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah. If if I've missed out on any research or any points that you think, you know, oh, yeah, absolutely know. prove that the moon landings were fake, then please message them in on our Instagram at the court case, not at the, just at court case podcast. <laughs> um, and are there any conspiracy theories that you would like us to cover next? I thought yeah. since we started, I thought we would start with like a classic one to get the ball rolling. But if there's any mm-hmm. more niche ones that um people want us want us to cover i i would love to do that um there are a lot of cool interesting ones interesting yeah. ones out there and just like cool cool stories and stuff i mean like for example i touched on one john f kennedy w- w- while he was assassinated oh, yes. loads of people think that that was the government that did that it wasn't the guy that did it Lone it's just so rifle. interesting talking about all this stuff mm. like i mean it at is. the end of the day conspiracy theories we're never going to know the real answer no. But like I feel like with this one we do know it's just people Yeah. Not, I don't know. Like people wanting to make it something else which is fair and fine. Absolutely, but... yeah. There's so... I think people are just so skeptical as well mm. to believe everything so quickly. Yeah. I think um apparently after which I think is really interesting. Apparently fever on the moon landings being f- faked got really popular just after 9/11. Oh, so okay. at the same time 9-11 happened and obviously you got conspiracies that um, that was fake and everything people obviously latched onto other stuff and so the moon landings being faked was became really popular as well that's one that I would like to touch on to be fair because that's an interesting one I, that, obviously that definitely happened but the conspiracy is that it was um, orchestrated by the USA by their own people it wasn't you know the terrorists that's basically what the conspiracy theory is and there's Jesus. Uh, and to be fair that one has more evidence for it being true than the moon landings do that's a bit more of a a bit of a more difficult one oh, okay well but, i'm interested in the the pyramids one i hear loads of people talking about that yeah who built I, the pyramids I, I find it mental but i've mm. seen a lot of things lately that's like making me sway the other way so what's the um we didn't build humans didn't build the pyramids or what well i'll, I'll keep my opinions until we get to <laughs> the, the topic otherwise people are not going to be excited for it are they yeah that's a good point but yeah please <laughs> if you have any conspiracy theories that you would like us to cover please message him next week's podcast is going to be a cool one we've got our now good friend of ours jack randall on the show um he's our first male podcast collab really he is he? indeed he does and a, he's a lovely chap yeah canadian fella he um does a podcast called stay at home son which is like but he talks a about, play on words it's ironic he doesn't want to be a yeah, stay at home son yeah that's what the aim of his podcast is he likes traveling and things like that and visiting different people that are running their own businesses and stuff it sounds quite interesting we had a really great chat with him about loads of different stuff yeah it was fun that's what you guys have got to look forward n- next week that's we've got a... more po- we've got more collabs lined up we have got more collabs lined up um and so obviously so many more fun conspiracy theories to talk about yeah. this is literally only the beginning guys episode uh, 20 like mental only the beginning we've got exciting plans not just collabs for the podcast in general coming up over the next couple months so oh my uh, god next month will be a good month guys i promise yeah yeah but um, so that's stuff for you guys to look out for. But in regards to this episode, we're coming to the end now and at the end of our 20th episode. So mental mm-hmm, me and T are going to go and pop a bottle of virtual champagne after we finish this. Uh, but I really appreciate everybody from the beginning of this podcast that has stayed with us through all 20 episodes. New people that have turned up and have been so supportive in the short amount of time that they've been listening to us. You know, the 1.5k listeners that we have, it's so nice to know that you guys are enjoying what we make and stuff and I love it and thank you as well sweet tea for doing it with me because you are amazing you're welcome and thanks for letting me <laughs> be a part of this journey 
Uh, not willingly but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no thank you everybody for listening we will see you guys next week I hope you have a great weekend um, we'll talk to you very soon adios guys goodbye everybody enjoy see you later have a wonderful weekend <laughs>